Hello and welcome. You don't know how much I appreciate you viewing my video. Today we're going to be talking about my hydroponic growth system that I have for homestead gardening. Uh, I've got it inside of a Harbor Freight 10 by 12 foot greenhouse. Uh, let me show it to you. This is my current Harbor Freight greenhouse setup with some few modifications that I've made to it. Uh, let me show you the greenhouse and show you some of the modifications I made. When I was reviewing this greenhouse, it seemed like it was a good greenhouse. It was in the right price range. Uh, this greenhouse, at the time I bought it, I believe it was $850. And then I got it with a 20% off coupon. So it made it more affordable for me than some of the other greenhouses. They cost $2,000, $3,000 sometimes. Uh, however, there was some problems with it. Some of the problems being the sheeting that's on this is just kind of a flimsy sheeting and it comes with these little clips made to hold it on. Well, these clips just won't stay in place very long. So what I did is I went and I took some, some sheet metal screws or some self-tapping screws, the ones that has the rubber washers on them, and I anchored them in in each one of the places. And so far, this has held up good. We had a 60 mile an hour wind the other night. That's rare for us here in Alabama, but, but it did happen and everything stayed in place. Also to help out with my airflow, I got these vents I put on. I'll have a link in my description on where you can purchase these. And then I bought just some regular uh, screen mesh to put on it to keep the insects out. Uh, these automatically open up and close as the fan comes on. Here where I live, in the summertime, it'll get as much as 100 degrees. So I bought this mesh that goes over the top of it. And you'll have to forgive me, we have a lot of pine trees here where I live, so a uh, pine straw kind of collects on the top of it. But with this sheet, I was able to put it on. So this mesh is, I believe it's a 40% mesh, uh, which allows light to still go through, but yet it keeps some of the heat out. It gets very hot in that greenhouse sometimes and it just needs a little bit of extra protection. And uh, I just bought some of these little adjustable bungee cords that put on here and it just kind of holds this down. And you can see around here where I put it together, I put these screws in all the locations around it. As we come around the back, You'll see where I have an exhaust fan put in there. We'll see it from the inside in just a minute. And that's really helped me with uh, controlling the temperature inside this greenhouse. Okay, let's go inside and have a look at my setup on the inside. All right, inside my greenhouse, I run three different kinds of hydroponic systems. The first one I have is the, uh, is the Dutch bucket system. And then coming on around, I do the crikey method for my lettuce and it's pin on around I have the NFT rail system for growing herbs and so forth uh, let me show you how my system works uh, first of all I've got a large igloo cooler I don't remember I think it's 120 quart I believe is what it is um, I'll try to open it up and let you see if you can see anything inside. Ah, oh, you really can't see anything inside of it. Inside of my cooler, I've got two openings. Uh, it had cup holders built in and it just made it real simple for me to put my drain pipe in one and then my outlet, put my outlet on the other side uh, where my pump is. So my pump that I've got in there, I don't remember how many gallons per minute it is, but I'll post it in the description and I'll have a link to where you can purchase it online. Uh, so it, it, it just pumps up through this tube 
it comes up here that I've got a split and right here in the split it one part of it travels up and goes to my NFT system and you'll see where I have these little connectors if you follow it around you'll see where it runs into it and then on the other split is where it just runs along the whole system and then I just capped it off right here so right here I'm just using standard half inch PVC pipe and then I just bought these little connectors where I'm able to get this small tube and I'll link this tube in these connectors uh, where I got them and this just runs into one of these buckets this bucket all it is is just a Lowe's five gallon bucket and I bought this insulation because like I said it gets very hot in here and so I want to keep this as cool as I can I want to keep the sunlight out of it to keep the mold and mildew from growing uh, then I just bought these baskets I just got these off Amazon and they hold my my clay pellets so what I'm doing with my Lowe's buckets is I put this insulation around it to keep the sun out and also help keep them cool. Uh, behind this, which you can't see, there is a rubber uh, grommet right there that this pipe just slides into. I don't use any glue in this system, whatever. It's a low pressure system, so I don't have to have any glue. Um, what I've got is running inside inside of the system is tubing see if I put it in there where you can see what it's doing but you can see the rubber grommet where the pipe goes in and then I just have just a elbow on the end of it and at the where I put it in at that's actually the fill line on it where it's able to go to and then I just put this 8 inch basket filled with uh, hydrotin and I'll just actually I'll just put my plant down in there and then it'll start doing I'll, let me actually show you one uh, I don't have anything planted in any of these yet in a following video we're going to do some planting but inside of this and actually have some asparagus and asparagus returns every year so I didn't take it out but I'm going to lift this up and show you how how it works on the inside of it it's hard doing this one handed let me see if I can do it this way so you can see down in there all the the roots maybe I'll do better if I shine a light on it I guess you can see where the roots come out of the basket and then they go on down into the bucket and just stay wet down there on a regular basis this lid it just just closes real nicely on there inside of my crackly method this is where I I usually grow butter crunch lettuce it grows really good in here I've just got the three inch cups and I'll show you down inside of it I just have a an aerator with a, a stone that just keeps water moving there's no water that there's no water that runs into this I just fill it up and then it stays full but you look in there and see how my stone works inside of that and I want my water level to be just to where 
it touches the bottom of the cups you see this the very bottom of it's wet about right there that's about where I want it and I'll plant my plant down about to that level and this does amazing growing lettuce uh, if you're wondering what this is water that I have it it's I don't have a rainwater system I use just regular chlorinated water that comes from our city uh, and what I'll do is I'll put my water in there and over time over about 48 hours all the chlorine will just dissipate out of the thing that way I don't have any chlorine going in my system I'll just take that and it runs into my cooler whenever I need to top it off and fill it up now with my rail system what I do with it is I've got a little a little PVC pipe deal where I have a hole drilled into a pipe and that lets my water level go up but the water just comes in down at that one end and it just runs through here and as the roots I don't want it just flooding and drowning my plant so what I'll do is I'll put this in here and let the water level slowly fill up up to right here and that puts it right at the bottom of this cup and that way my plants can start rooting and once they take root I can unscrew that and let the roots run in there and it just keeps the roots wet instead of keeping it just the whole thing saturated I have an aerator that runs here and I've got a a six valve extension that lets the pumps separate one of them runs over to my toad over there and the other one runs down into my cooler and that keeps that water aerated there all right, so I have a rock stone also down here that aerates the water down in my cooler. Um, and then it just pumps it up. Uh, also, I didn't show you on the end of my TV right here, I made a little uh, thing where I can take water out of my system. And I'll show you what I do with it as far as adding chemicals and stuff in there. But I can just turn it on and water just pours right out of it. So, in one of the one of the following in the following video, I'm going to show you how I plant, and we'll go through the process of what all goes into this. But I just, whenever I built this, I just put pea gravel down. I leveled it out, put my stones in there. I've got the eight-inch blocks, and then I've got a four-inch block, and then I just took. I, at first, I thought I needed just a. Uh, a two by 12 which wound up not being big enough so I had to get another two by six and put it back there to be able to hold everything together um, but with this being 12 foot long I've got one two three four sets of blocks and that's been plenty enough to hold this system up told you I was going to show you about my exhaust system right now it is currently 79 degrees so that's not warm enough for me to have my fan kick on yet but whenever it does heat up this fan it comes with a thermometer and a controller already in it and I just have to over time just adjust it and uh, make it come on about where I want it I like for it to get about 85 degrees in here. That seems like a good comfortable temperature to keep my plants at. Um, I just bought this, these things right here from Lowe's. I don't remember what they're called, but 
they, they were perfect for being able just to mount them inside of this rail. Uh, and I just run a little bit of power up here off of my lights. I've got a light in here that lights it up in here. Uh, also, along my, I tried planting corn in here last year. It, it did okay, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. They're just, it, corn just gets too high for these, but I've got these little rollers right here that are great. I'll, I'll link them, but they just pull down and the wheel on them, it's got a, a little catch on it to where it only let it go so far and then see the little hook on it, when it gets right there, it stops. It won't let it go down no further. And this is great for bringing down and being able to tie your plants off. It does really great for tying up my tomatoes. Um, what I did is I just, let's see if I can get back here and show you, but I just tied a little string in the hole where the bucket handle used to be and that worked out pretty good right now I've got it hanging a little bit loose but like I said I can take it and I can tighten it up make it as tight as I want but I just run this cable across and it allows me to to slide it I have to pick it up to be able to slide it but once it gets on there it, it, it's stuck it don't go anywhere so that's worked real good as far as holding my plants up I use tomato clips like this, what I'll do is I'll just put it around the line and around the plant. And it'll just hold my plant up right. So if you got any questions or comments, please ask me. I'll be glad to tell you more about my system. Uh, I'll be able to show you more. I just kind of need to know what you're interested in knowing. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how I take my plants. I go from seed all the way up to uh, putting them inside of the hydrotten. Um, and I'm going to show you my little setup that I use to germinate the seeds. I'm going to show you the system that I use to get my seeds started. And it works out pretty good for me.